I'll tell you what, Alan's very angry and he's currently oh. in Kazakhstan. The two oh, things might yes. be related. Let me just read it because yeah. Alan needs his moment. Yep. Um, good afternoon, Jane and Fee. Your show is replete with hypocritical anti-male propaganda. Is this your effort to redress the balance of generations of bias in life against women? Yeah, partly. Yeah. <laughs> Do you realise that you collectively verge on misandry? Mm. Uh, Alan is very keen to point out that he is neither misogynistic, Fee, or chauvinistic, or in any way anti-women. And he illustrates this point by uh, telling us that he enjoys listening to Aisha Hazarika, Kathy Newman, Ruth Davidson and Charlotte Ivers at all. Just tone down your rhetoric and, oh, it gets better, use your considerable talents to explore the topics of the day in a more balanced fashion. Well, that's, well told that's, us. that's told us both. Thank you, Alan. Actually, in all seriousness, Alan, tell us why you're in Kazakhstan. Um, because I, I would love to know um, what's going on there, what you're doing there, and just what it's like. I haven't got a clue about any of the stands, have you? I've never been to any of the stands. No, exactly. No. So, yes, Alan, be part of us. Yeah. Join our family. And also, what I would say about the misandry thing uh, is that... For every time you hear something, Alan, where you think, oh, they're having a bit of a go about men, I suppose this might be the first time that you've listened to a radio programme presented by two women. So you might be hearing something that's often said, but just not often said within your earshot, mm. in the same way that I think you and I have got very used to over the years, hearing men talking to men within our earshot. Absolutely. Is that a nice way of putting it? Uh, yeah, I think you... Alan, have you got the message? <laughs> no, so it's not... Yeah, no, you're right. It's just that for years, men talked at us, not just on the radio, but in almost every other aspect of our lives as well. Yeah, so this and might be a little bit of the pendulum yeah, swinging. Yeah, just gen ever so gently going in the yeah. other direction. And but it's only for a couple of hours. And don't think that we, don't think that we hate men, because yeah. we, re we really don't, actually. We, we hate the... The twits. I hate the prats. Yeah, but not um, the others. No, I mean, I'm going to be smothering my decolletage in Kate Moss's Cosmos. What was it again? The product we were trying on with Josh Arnold tonight. I think it is. Is it Osmos or Kate Moss? Cosmos. Cosmos. But it's the mythic tears of a Greek legend. Of Kyrios. That's right. Yes. Is that Nick Kyrios? So no, none of this makes any sense no, at you all had to, if, you, if you weren't with the feature. But are you smothering yourself in that in the hope of literally a man sticking to you on the way home? <laughs> I'm hoping to attract a mate on the Northern Line. <laughs> <laughs> what are the chances? Well, I think, I think unfortunately, uh, they're quite high, but I would be worried about the quality of the catch. But you keep us posted. Were you talking about yellow cars last week? Yes, we were, because Fiat uh, have introduced a no grey car policy because they just want to be more fun. No grey car? No grey cars, okay. no. Well, Joe, who's in Poundbury. Now, Poundbury is that... Is it the one that King Charles built? That's right. It's yeah. his, like a model village. Yes, <laughs> with no, real people. With real people. It's not, it's not like that place out on the M40 that everybody goes to once. <laughs> the little miniature one. The little toy town. We went there once, it was so dirty. Because <laughs> it had really, really big litter the in a tiny, tiny town. So if someone threw, you know, their dead magnum yeah. wrapper in the whole town square, it was just... It looked enormous. <laughs> That's a very real danger with model villages, isn't it? There's uh, Beck and Scott. That's the name, Thank isn't you. It? Yes. yes. There's one at Southport as well. Well, there certainly used to be. Um, they're a weird kind of attraction. They're so strange. Oh, those teeny, but then tiny I think worlds. they're exactly the same category as Madame Two Swords. Why you would want to go and see yeah. lots of people basically encased forever as candles, I just don't know. Well, say what you like about Madame Two Swords. There's a queue outside there, whatever the weather. There There's really a, is. Well, there is. You're absolutely right. But I wonder how many of those are repeat visitors. Who can say? If you've been more than once to Madame Tussauds, that's another subject we can discuss. Jane and Fee at Times.Radio. Uh, jo is in Poundbury and she says, we used to have a gorgeous yellow 2CV. It attracted flies like nothing on earth, squished all over the bonnet. I agree with Fiat. I call that colour undercoat grey. It's just boring. Thank you, Jo. Mm. Uh, this one from Lucy, just catching up on my off-air backlog. And your chat about school trips reminded me of when I, age 14, went on a day trip to Boulogne from, now you can say this, I can't, Heckman Dwyck. Heckman Dwyck. Heckman Dwyck, I think. In West Yorkshire. Uh, we set off at about 3 a.m. We had time to wander for an hour or so before practicing ordering a croissant and then heading home. 
I don't remember anything about it other than the fact that I had recorded a special cassette to keep me company on the journey. What was it? I Am The One And Only by Chesney Hawkes. Good song, though. Back to back on both sides. It was 1991. So she only had yep. Chesney Hawkes. I Am The One And Only, all the way from West Yorkshire to Boulogne and back. I do like that song. Not I wonder much. whether you'd like it after that. You probably wouldn't. Yeah. Uh, now, we were contacted before Glastonbury by uh, a listener who was going for the first time, uh, and she's been back in touch. It obviously took her a week to process what she went through at Glastonbury, and she's now made contact again. Um, it is Caroline. Um, you wanted to know how two ladies in their 60s got on with our first Glastonbury. We had an incredible time, despite the piercing sun that gave us a tan to last the rest of the year. The Glasto vibe was really so positive, it needs to be taken out into the world. I heard many Liverpudlian voices. Well, you would, you see. <laughs> at a place that absolutely get everywhere. buzzes with positivity. You're always going to find a scouser. Uh, there were many, many happy stories to tell, but I'll just relay a couple to avoid the Glasto gloat. Um, well, actually, she's only really got one, which I'm going to mention. A Friday started with a 5K run or walk around the site. This formed the last part of a run challenge, raising 250 quid for Maggie's, that's the cancer support charity. They were excellent to me uh, when I had cancer in 2019. This alone was an incredible experience at six in the morning when the site was really quiet. I had a quick chuck a bu bucket of water over me shower, coffee and a croissant, that eased us into the day and we were out, out, out. We enjoyed the hives, the lightning seeds, then we went on to the pyramid stage for Texas, who was superb, and the churn-ups, who of course ended up being the Foo Fighters. Foo Fighters yeah. yeah. Um, by this time, nine o'clock, we were done. Our tired feet took us back to base camp, about a mile away. But as we all know, when camping, you adapt. So I opened up the case from the camping stove, poured a little boiled water and cold water on each side, added some shampoo, and voila, a foot spa. It was heaven. And Caroline has helpfully attached a lovely photograph of her foot spa. Wonderful. I hope the camera's got that. <laughs> um, it, it does sound amazing. And then they went out again. She, went, I can't believe this. She went to a rave at Arcadia. Caroline, it sounds to me like you got the Glasto bug very early on. Well, now Brilliant, you've started actually. your festival journey. Well, we don't want to overhype this. Will you end up at Glastonbury next I, time around, which is meant to be a kind of all female, female lineup? Yeah, isn't it? well, all female headliners. Yeah. So Taylor, Rihanna, I think. Taylor, as well. yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, and the Spice Girls. Well, you heard it here, not first, but you've heard <laughs> it here that that is probably next year's Glasto headlining lineup. Yeah, will you go? Well, no. Okay. No, but I'll certainly whittle on about it and I'll watch it on the telly. But we are going, I think we're all right to say we're going to Latitude. We are going to Latitude. Yeah. Yep. So we are festivaling ourselves it's my up. my festival summer. In yeah. Suffolk. And we've had so many conversations, haven't we, about our accommodation. Because that's where we are at in our mid-50s. It's not, you know, how many acts should we stay for. It's <laughs> what kind of a mattress will be in the yurt. And do I bring my <laughs> special pillow? <laughs> Well, I mean, seriously, it's not it, uh, traveling even for a night away from home. Away from the pillow is difficult. It's a big yeah. thing, isn't it? Yeah, no, I know what you mean. Yeah. I've asked if I can bring my dog, Nancy, and, you can't. and they've said no. no. I'm not sure they even contacted the authorities well, about that. It they was just sweet said of no. You, uh, to think that they might. I'm here to tell you you're quite right, they didn't. Well, but they disappeared and then came back in the room and told you you couldn't take Nancy. I think they literally just went outside, counted to ten, and came back in. Yeah. Didn't they? Ten and no. 